Well, as you may know, HVACR survival is obviously, what do I do? Heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, and some of the tools I use are really cool. And one of the cool tools that I use a lot to help me do my job successfully and do it quicker is a thermal imager. Now I've used several different imagers over the past. I've used FLIR, I've used Snap-on, and then lately I've been using the HK Micro. So the Micro has been the best one so far. I was contacted by HSF Tools to check out their new camera. They assured me that it was just as good or better than my HK Micro, even though the specs look very similar, and so does quite a few other things. Let's take a look and find out. Right now, here's the box. It comes in a nice box. So does the HK Micro. There's a size difference there. HK Micro, made in China. P2W here was made in Vietnam. We already know the HK Micro is a great tool. I got it from True Tech Tools. Uh, the P2W here can be found on Amazon, which I'll have links down in the description below. They have a Black Friday sale going on right now, and it is a really good deal. Quite a bit cheaper right now than the HIK Micro. All right, like I said, I'm not real big into this unboxing thing, but they did request I do that. So as you can see, it's a box. The cover comes off like that. Got a uh, label here to tell you the serial number. So for me, I actually keep my boxes. This is nice because now you'll have a copy of the serial number. We lift up the box, everything's nice and pretty in there. Out comes the device, and then we have a booklet. So that's about it for that. So we get a thank you for your purchase. We've got a calibration certificate, and then we have the actual thermal imaging manual, which we've got apps for Android and iOS both. Starting off, they want you to charge the thing for two and a half hours. They want you to use their cable. And now let's go ahead and get started on some of the other different things that are inside here. The case has a carrying handle here, so you can keep it around your arm. It does come with a cable here, which is USB-C, and it does have an adapter from USB-C to USB-A if you have an older computer that doesn't have USB-C. We've got a uh, divider here that protects the screen. The device can be pulled right out of it. As you can see here, we got the HK Micro here on the left. We got the P2W here on the right. Starting right off the beginning here, they pretty much look identical. They both have buttons at the top here, power button, snapshot button. You got optical sensor over here on the left. You got image sensor for the actual thermal and a uh, light here. I would not be surprised if the same company doesn't build it. These look just like the FLIR originally too, but you know, they outdid the FLIR. On the bottom, it has a spot for the actual tripod. To turn it on, we're gonna press both buttons at the same time, see who turns on quicker. So 1001, 1002, let up. The HSF comes on faster. The HK Micro boots up. Oh, that time the image came up a little sooner on the HKK Micro. Uh, you can see they pretty much are set up exactly the same here. You can see center, max, minimum, center, max, minimum. Temperature display here on the left versus temperature display here there. Clock and stuff's down here the same. This is set for 97. I have this one set for 97 for the emissivity. You got a menu button here, which turns on a house, a picture frame, and a setting. It also comes up with the measurement tool, which shows that there. You can hit the next tool, which is your picture in picture mode, uh, which can give you fusion. Uh, I mean, these are identical. This is no difference whatsoever. I mean, verbatim. So here's where you can check your multiple different palettes. You got, I like Iron Bow. So we've got that one both set identical there. Sometimes different ones are, are nicer for different situations. So the level and span here, you can see the auto and manual mode. I would say whoever made it uh, most likely uh, either makes the same one for the other person. Uh, so now it's gonna be a matter of uh, who's got the best price and is the, uh, is the quality the same. So let's go ahead and get into the camera here. Uh, one thing I noticed with the, it has a nice sleep function. So if I tap the power button, it immediately shuts off. If I tap the button on the HIK Micro, uh, it does not do anything. It doesn't have the sleep function that the P2W has. So that's one thing that it's got that I kind of liked. I'd never seen that before. Also, the buttons are a little easier to see and they're a little more pronounced. Uh, they both have USB-C here on the side with uh, microphones and speakers. They both can record video. They both record uh, still images. I'm gonna show you some different things that you can do with it, as far as examples of finding hot spots and different issues and how you can use it as a diagnostic tool. For the most part, put our hand here, get a little temperature measurement, and you can see Depending on how they've got their, their deal here, they uh, pretty much work exactly the same. Which, you know, it's, I don't see a lot in image quality difference. Um, 
I haven't seen it enough to make a big difference here on it. Like I said, if it's got the same features and they can do it cheaper and has the same kind of warranty, then uh, it might be worth considering. Now this can transfer image straight to your phone by wireless uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. You can also hook up the uh, USB-C and transfer the pictures to a computer and then you can uh, use them for whatever you need. You can, it's a touch sensitive screen so it literally moves up and down. Your language is French and English. Capture settings, uh, visual image which you can do regular pictures which none of them have a good camera for that. All they use that for is to get an outline of what you're looking at to kind of help emphasize the uh, edges of it. You can either pick negative four to 302 or you can do 212 to 752. That's the ranges that it works in. Right now I've been running an auto. It can cause you to have more switching back and forth sometimes uh, just because the uh, camera has such a wider range to look at. Uh, the distance basically just calibrates it for uh, the camera that looks at it with a regular view to match it up with a the thermal so you can get an outline. Sensitivity is the reflectiveness of the device that you're looking at. Shinier things are harder to measure than what darker things are. Sometimes I'll use black tape on a actual uh, pipe so I can get a reading that's accurate. This does have alarm settings, which is kind of interesting. It will vibrate and it can flash the uh, little light here on the front to let you know that you've went above or below your threshold. That is defeatable, so you can turn it on and turn it off right here on the front. Okay, under connections, you got WLAN, hotspot, and Bluetooth. Hotspot is just directly right to your actual phone. That way you can connect directly to it if you don't have Wi-Fi. And you also got Bluetooth here, so we can connect right to it. You can store the stuff immediately on your phone and you can email from the phone. Uh, I believe this can also email straight from the device, which I never do. I would want to control it with my phone myself personally. But those are some of the options that you got there. Okay, the freezer's running. You're able to see the condenser coil actually is wrapped through the outside of the freezer and that's where they're getting rid of the heat so you got cold uh, lines your evaporator plates basically on the inside and you have the hot lines uh, on the back side here you can see that we're cranking out about 67 degrees area you can find a refrigerant line if you wanted to know where can i drill in at you know you can drill right here and not hit a refrigerant line here on the cathedral ceiling you can see that there's a little bit of insulation loss up there at the top like i said 30 degrees outside you can see the smoke detector right there um, looks like we got a little bit of gap around that or your wall two by fours here on the side here it's pretty obvious where they're at uh, it's just really that sensitive to things and it's even picking it up through this picture here. Anytime you have a 2x4 it's going to be a conductor uh, temperature and it's going to transfer right in through to the drywall. Okay, we're outside right now. The house over there is about 100, 190 feet, 200 some feet away. You can see the trees out here. You know, like I said, it's 22 degrees according to the ground temperatures. We come over to the house, you can see the heat loss through the uh, basement and down here in the basement area, you can see that we've got a uh, minimum of 19. I don't know why it's that low because it ain't that cold out here, but that can happen from reflectiveness. You can see where my 2x4s are in the walls. You can also see where the windows are at. That's another brand new window. And then if you want to actually adjust that temperature range so that it's only seen a certain area, you can go into manual mode. You can see, the, like I said, the 2x4s there where there's heat. This is an easy way to find if somebody has a problem with their insulation. I was looking at my boy's um, house and his insulation had settled and you can see it plain as day. If there's any animals out there and stuff, I mean you, that right there is all the way down the street. Um, any type of heat signature at all, you're picking it up. This would be great if you're tracking animals in the, uh, if it's colder out or if there's a big temperature difference that's really going to show up. Uh, that'll make a huge difference. Okay, we can see the pug here. He is just hanging out. You can get him to move around. You can see how his footprints just go everywhere. With even this little of time that he's standing in place, it's picking it up. For water leaks, you can see here. Isn't that awesome? The splat. I grant this is warmer, but you can see how it just goes everywhere. And so if you've got a, a rainstorm going on, rain's generally going to be a little colder and you can see the water leaking through the wall or through the roof. And sometimes through the roof is really difficult, but you might be able to find it through the uh, ceiling. Then uh, we'll see if we can get the electric seats to kick on and the steering wheel. So the steering wheel and the seats. You should be able to see, yep, there's the heater elements right there. 
You can tell that they're working. You can see exactly where they're at. All the way around on that. I didn't know there was that many of them. Holy cow. I had no idea they had that many of them. Okay. All right, there they go. You can see them starting to form right in here. It's starting to show up. You can see it's there. You can see some there. There we go. Now, if you used to uh, crank down the um, actual sensitivity, you could see that a little faster. Pocket remote that was in my pocket, you can see right there. So you can tell where your electric seats are or aren't working. And then another thing uh, for like diagnosing catalytic converters. You can see the exhaust coming in and going down and back. There's the other exhaust going back. The catalytic converters are kind of hidden up there with some heat shields. It's really hard to get in there and I don't really want to get completely under the main, underneath the Jeep. But you can see easily if your catalytic converter is getting as hot as it should because it should be at like over a thousand uh, 300 degrees area or more. Another big thing you can do is looking for stuck calipers. Uh, I had a snap-on camera uh, that did thermal and it had all examples so you can actually see different cylinders that aren't running correctly on the engine. Uh, the heat going on, you can actually see whether or not uh, alternators are working properly, water pumps. Um, it just really comes down to getting experience with it. This in, there's catalytic converter. Go to the center, we're at 5, 19, 520 is still rising. Now here is the electrical panel. This is where this can really come in handy to find loose connections. So we open up the panel. And I'm leaving it in this mode just so that you can tell what we're looking at. But you can see something here is pulling more power. Now let's put my thumbprint there. That right there is the 100 amp breaker feeding my transfer switch over here. So if we open up this transfer switch, we can see that the heat pump right here is running a little warmer. I mean, it's not an extreme amount. It's like uh, 67, 63 degrees area. Compared to the other breakers, it's not very warm. Some of it's reflectiveness, so like if you come up to glass, it will see your heat signature bounce off the glass. Uh, as far as walking around just finding things, I mean, if you want to know if somebody has cameras hidden in the house, you can literally use this to find their cameras pretty quickly because they're going to have a heat signature. Um, transformers, anything like that, you'll be able to find. Okay, you probably can see propane levels here. Uh, my propane tank is filled at about 80% capacity. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, but if you used to run some hot water across it, you'd be able to see it plain as day. Uh, the heat pump, it's running obviously in heating mode. You can see, you can see the lines there. It's got a metal grill on it, so it's making it hard to see. But you can see your different components down there in the compressor. Definitely can check discharge temperature on your compressor. All right, there you go, guys. That's the review and testing of the P2W Thermal Imager. Would I buy it? I would give it a try. I mean, it definitely looks well built. It feels quality, and I haven't had any problems with it. All the features for automatic shutdown and things like that's pretty cool. I like the uh, sleep button, so it doesn't have to go completely to deep sleep to where it takes a long time for it to come back. But at least you're not running the imager and stuff like that, which kills the battery. Uh, on average, I think it has about four hours of battery life. I've only had a chance to use it for about a week. And so because this video is due for Black Friday, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a bunch of testing on it, but I will be using it in my videos coming up. So I know reviews sometimes can be boring, but if you're looking for a nice product, it's good to know what you're getting before you spend a lot of money on it. Uh, the price on this, I believe right now, is like $399 on the Black Friday sale. Uh, the HIK Micro can go for as high as $599, and even with my 8% discount, you're looking at about $550 something. And that's about $150 difference in the price. Uh, there is a cheaper HIK Micro on Amazon, but the problem is it doesn't have Wi Fi. So you're paying uh, the extra money for that. The one on Amazon was like $479. So would I give it a try? Absolutely. For $150 savings, yeah, I'd give it a shot. Uh, it looks like a good quality product, and uh, it's definitely. Uh, has done well from what I see here. And you can see in the examples that I showed you that it's picking up everything in the breaker boxes, the steering wheels, the heated seats, the catalytic converters, the walls, you name it. It's unlimited all the different things you can do when you actually see uh, as a full scope of what's going on around. 
Laser thermometers are great, but they're just for spot. This gives it to you in a full image and you can pick which kind of rainbow factor you want. And like I said, you could use it for search and rescue probably too. From what I see, I could see things way out in the distance. And I know with my FLIR, I definitely could not do it. Uh, the resolution and stuff like that, I'll go ahead and throw all that stuff on the screen again. So if you guys would, hit the like button, subscribe. If you would, check down in the description below and check out the links to the product. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.